Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast. We're talking about stage 17. Now, normally we every day say, Q Alain. This is a very special day. The man himself, as they say, the king has come down from his castle. So, uh, Alain, go ahead and give us uh, stage, are you, stage 17. Stage 17 today, yes. From Grenoble to uh, Meribel, Col de la Lose. Ooh, we got it live today, y'all. We got it live. And that is, and what climb did they do in the middle? Oh boy, I have no idea. La Madeleine. Le? Uh, Col de la Madeleine, yes. Col de la Madeleine. Col de la Madeleine. And just since you're here, just tell us tomorrow. Just, uh, just keep talking. I can't can't read. Uh, (laughs) My eyes are so bad. Okay, tomorrow. How do you say time check in French? I don't know. Time. Le time check. (laughs) Ah, see, see. See. Le point. Well, tomorrow. uh, Whatever it is. It's from Maribel to. La Roche sur Foron, sur Foron, mais, but uh, the climb is, you know, I can't read. Okay, well, that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it, but I can't read that's it. That's good enough. He needs oh, those rokas. Thanks, a buddy. A stronger rokas. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger prints. Bigger prints. Does that help? At the top? Okay, hold on. So which climb do you want? Um, he has a magnifying oh, thing oh, on his oh, phone. That is... <laughs> You know, and we'll talk about Roka, a big, big day for them. We'll talk about them later in the show. But, folks, if I ever have a magnifying app on my iPhone, you just fucking shoot me right in the face. <laughs> okay, there it is. Montée du plateau de what? De quoi? Montée du plateau des Guyères. Yep. Okay. Like that, yeah, awesome. Montée, de, montée du plateau des Guyères. Sounds tough. Time check. Oh. And I got to awesome. point out, this is something you don't see every day, a uh, Frenchman in a NASCAR hat. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's for Gigi. That's Jimmy, right. Jimmy's, Jimmy's uh, last year hat. Okay. Today's show brought to you by Aura Ring, as, as it is each and every day. Uh, of course, the big announcement yesterday, the partnership with, with the UFC, as I dug uh, deeper and deeper into these articles, uh, and I didn't know this, apparently Daniel Cormier, one of the big fighters uh, in, the, in the league, uh, is a big user of the Aura Ring and actually was, as I talked about earlier in the tour, um, was watching his body temp, core temp go up, and bam, all of a sudden got got the corona. Um, so these guys, I mean, they're just doing great things. Partnerships with the NBA, the WNBA. Speaking of the NBA, how about the Denver Nuggets coming back from three down or three to one down for the second time in a row, making it on to the next round? Um, WNBA, uh, uh, UFC, as I just said, as well as NASCAR. Uh, so head on over to AuraRing.com. The flow code right there. And I believe we have a slide from one of our um, listen. Look at this motherfucker. I mean, is oh, this guy, wow. holy moly. That's a lot better than what I'm getting. 96 on his readiness, 94 on his sleep. Brad was his cat's name? Yeah, that's Brad. Brad, that's the me. only criticism I have, or just one thing you may want to uh, pay attention to, is you might want to charge your ring. Looks like she's running a little low. When you sleep <laughs> that well, it probably just drains the battery. All right, dude. Thanks. Alan, thank you. Ciao, guys. Merci. Ciao, Alain. No. Merci. Merci Time check. Time check. Time check. <laughs> hey, today's show also brought to you by the Rocket Ship Ventum Bikes. I've been loving this road machine. I've got, and actually, I have their new gravel bike that we're going to take out, whether you know it or not, tomorrow, George. Uh, these guys and gals are giving away a free bike. Anybody that heads on, heads on over to VentumRacing.com slash the move, uh, check it out. I mean, this thing is so sexy. Uh, no cables anywhere too. Um, I've just been loving it. So ventumracing.com slash the move, sign up for a free bike. Also 20% off any purchase until the end of October. And as well, they're the global bike partner for Ironman, which as you know, is something I think Richie Port could probably win one day. Last one of the day here for a second. Hammerhead, a company that I just love, love. We, they just launched the Karoo 2. Uh, they as well are giving away three free Karoos. If you head on over to hammerhead.io slash ride for more. Uh, in, in terms of head units, this one is, this is just next level. I tell people, look, if your old device is your grandmama's flip phone, this is your iPhone 11 Pro. This thing is, it, it packs so much into uh, a small piece of hardware, 40% smaller. 40% lighter than, than the previous Kairu one. Uh, again, head on over to hammerhead.io slash ride for more. There's our flow code. Sign up to win one of three free Kairu twos. Um, <clears throat> they did take some, uh, they, they had it. I would, I should just tell you all they had an initial batch that sold out 
in two hours. Uh, so now it, you'll, be, you'll be signing up to get on the waiting list. That waiting list is now pretty deep, but that's okay. They'll, they're projecting uh, not that long for delivery. So hammerhead. Well, kids, today didn't disappoint. Stage 17, it was, uh, you know, I guess uh, before we even talk about the day, the big news, right? Egan Bernal yeah. a la casa. We lost Bernal yesterday, uh, which, look, I'm a huge fan of this kid. Came onto the scene, uh, made a huge splash uh, early, r- right away in his career on a small Italian team. A few, le- few years later, went to Tour de France at 22 years old. And, look, he's, he's, he's having a hard time, this Tour de France, but I don't agree with him quitting just because his back and knee hurts a little bit. I mean, I've done 17 Tour de France's, and I don't think I ever finished without something hurting. Everything starts hurting in the third week, and I think out of respect for the race – for his teammates, um, and just for the sport in general, he should have just kept going. I mean, mm-hmm. of course, he's got goals at the end of the year, which are important. But for him to just pull out like that, I just don't. I didn't really agree with that. Uh, you have uh, turned a corner. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, that's as animated and and opinionated as I think I've heard you this tour. I'm I am, and by the way, I am really fucking proud of you. And I'm not even thinking. I'm not even sure it's, it was his decision. It could have been his team decision, which. No, don't back, don't back off. Oh, wait, wait, I'm I, not what, backing off. I'm what just I want to know are these. Are it's the, a wrong, in my opinion, it's a wrong decision. Like, finish the race out of the respect for the race and, and learn how to suffer through pain. I mean, obviously, the guy's incredible talent, but you're going to have these moments in your career. He's going to start getting older and older. And being a past Tour de France winner, he's going to get more and more pressure and more and more pains because with pressure comes pains and elements and all that. You just, you got to get through when, when you're not the best. Push it through, get to Champs Elysees and. And and think about how good it was the year before to get mm. there in the yellow jersey and what it'll feel like next year when you're back in the yellow jersey. And then make party. And then make party. I was just wondering if those are your own thoughts or if you listened to Johan yesterday. Because uh, oh, no. he went off Whoa. on this. Oh, he I, did. I did, I did yeah. not, actually. Oh, but you, I mean, very, very similar to what you're saying. Well, thank you, Johan. Uh, we yesterday, like. yeah, Johan, and this was before we knew he wasn't going to line and, up. And I've learned a lot from Johan, and mm-hmm. I, I could see him feeling the same exact way because I've obviously rode under, under him for seven, eight years. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he would have made his rider finish the race. It no was very, what. it was very similar. He's like, out of respect for your teammates that had been burying themselves for two weeks, and respect for the race, which you've already won, you need to show up. Yep. And uh, it's a great point. I, I remember uh, the 2010 tour, uh, which which we were on radio Radio Shack with. So you know, we we don't need to break down the idea of this comeback. But uh, nonetheless, we were there first year with Astana. Next year with Radio Shack, I started strong. I actually thought I was going to win that tour. Had a great prologue, and then just started falling off the bike. Uh, looking back on it, I'm like, why didn't why didn't you just go home? But at the time, uh, you know, we, we had brought out a new title sponsor in Radio Shack. We had you know sort of had the band back together. No part of me was like, fuck this, I'm going home. Yeah. I mean, I, it was a, it was a responsibility of mine. So to just to not to uh, pile on Bernal, but. You know, your sponsor is a sponsor spending $40 million a year, right? And so there is some responsibility to... And a weird year where you need to extend these contracts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows what's going on behind closed doors. But, man, more importantly, I'm just proud that George took a stand like that. That is well, that's a day maker. When Johan commented on that, did he know he went home already? Or no, he was saying he was just not. We didn't performing. know. Yeah. We didn't know. There were rumors, speculation. Yeah, and a lot of people are like, "Why doesn't he go home?" On the other side of the coin, what if Bernal wants to 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 go home, get right, and and do the Vuelta, get a little breather? Maybe again, that makes that's, more that, sense. That's 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 what we don't know behind closed doors. If that's if if the team collectively sat down and said, okay. Look, we have other objectives. It is a weird season. Stuff is all packed in here for the last couple of months. Giro's too soon. Yeah. So world championships, mm-hmm. which is probably too soon for him. But uh, but what an exceptional, speaking of Colombians, an exceptional performance from Miguel Angel Lopez, a superman. Um, Dude. Whose pick was that yesterday? Good job. Yeah. You, are on, you are on. You're firing on all cylinders. Well, I, just the way he finished that race, that stage yesterday, when everybody's on the limit, and the the attack he did was crazy impressive, and I just thought he can, he can feel that that strength in his legs, and just all of a sudden he's got the confidence. He's a he's a he's a stage racer. He's in the third week now, and he's on his way up. I mean, we're not. I'm not even counting him out for what the, what he can do the next couple of days because look, today he just rode away from the best riders in the race. Yeah, I mean it. Well, he rode away. We got to talk about Sepp Kuss, and we'll get to this, but. Here's my thing is, and we saw this when we covered 
Tour of Lombardia and I said it. I mean, this Peloton as a as a collective is they're all good. They're all strong. The bikes are light and fast and technology's there. It's gonna take days like today where there's by the way, that the tour hasn't been to this part of, of the Alps since nineteen seventy three. Uh, never done this. This section was not even paved back then. So it's going to take sections of 24%, 18%, sustained climbs of 10 plus percent to, to make a selection. You, these days of six, seven percenters, they, they got to be done. No one's going to yeah. drop anyone. You can't get away. You did mention that when we were watching that. That's a great point. And also, it was also the first stage, I believe, over 2,000 meters. And the steepness, that was just tailor-made for a guy like Lopez. And we saw you know, a guy like Sepp Kuss, who lives in Durango, Colorado, also very comfortable in that sort of altitude. It makes a huge difference if you're able to uh, train in that and live in those uh, and live in that environment. George also learned something today, which I'm. You know, it's very rare that I can educate the man. I don't pay much attention to to these things, but uh, if you do look at the profile, this this particular finish, so that's called the Souvenir Henri Henri de Grange. <laughs> so that's that means that signifies the highest point in this year's tour. And, and, and I did not and, know that and pretty boy over here did not. He's like, what's, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, and the other thing, and we were watching with a big group of uh, the local chapter of YPO here in Aspen, we had uh, a bunch of people over socially distanced, of course, sort of um, George freaking. Uh, 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 so they were like, how high is, it? you know, when we watch the tour and you see these big mountains and you think of, Oh, that must be like the Rockies. Or that must mm -hmm. So the finish today, the highest point in the tour this year is 2,300 meters. So call that 7,600 feet. That's 100 meters lower than where we're just sitting here in the studio. So, you know, people see these things. The Alps are, in fact, much, much lower than, than uh, the Rocky Mountains. But uh, they were surprised. They thought, yeah. you know, because when you watch it, you're like, that must be 12,000 feet. When Yeah, it's a big, it's a it's, big difference even racing here. Whenever we do the tour of Colorado, uh, just racing over Independence Pass, it's a whole different kind of suffering. One thing we, we didn't point out about Lopez also, not only is he comfortable with that sort of steepness, that sort of altitude, the guy is 5'4", 130 pounds. Mm. I mean, think about that. <laughs> yeah, Bob Baffert, you know, trains all these horses. He's sitting around going, huh, <laughs> exactly. we're looking for a jockey. <laughs> you know, I don't know these any horse names, Secretariat or, well, you know, whatever, but he could be good at that too. I was wondering, uh, as you saw today's climb, and they have that new bike path that they finished on, it was pretty animated and exciting to watch. And I know from the preview show, you were disappointed that there weren't any of the monumental French climbs. Right. Could this, down the road, become one of those? Well, it was pretty exciting. I don't know if it can. It takes, I mean, Vontu is Vontu, and Alto right. is Alto, because they've been doing that for, you know, not 100 years, but, you know, 80 years or whatever. And so... Um, it, it again, you're gonna have to have steep climbs. The Von Two will separate a group, Alp Duez will separate a group, but but it's gonna take steep stuff, steep this, things like this to, to blow it up. This can definitely become a, an iconic climb of the Tour de France. It, it did not disappoint, it actually reminded me of some of the finish in the Giro or the, or the Tour of Spain where the, they get these super, super steep climbs. And I think the organizers are watching that today going, All right, this is a lot of action in there. We kind of mm -hmm. like, we kind of like this. I was just thinking with that new bike path too. What a, what a destination! If you're watching it on TV and you want to go do a your own uh, recreational ride in France, you're mm -hmm. gonna go. I want to go do that one be, with that bike path. Makes right. it even easier. And they had a lift there, so if you, if you don't want uh, if you want to meet your honey at the top or whoever your 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 buddies or whatever, they can take <laughs> the lift up and you can ride up. But and if you keep going, it heads on over to Courchevel. So for all you fancy people on the it, bike path, yeah. Oh, nice. At least that's what I read. Mm -hmm. I hope that's right. I don't know if it's right. And and the other big, big story that may be the biggest story of the day, when I finally started watching the race, you had uh, Team Bahrain just setting tempo the entire day, uh, clearly wanting to set up Mika Landa, which, you know, I, look, it is what it is. I mean, it's it, it, he he gets the chicken salad, the chicken shit award of the day. I mean, what a what a he, homeboy is getting food in his room tonight, right? I mean, yeah. it just – and I'm being – slightly facetious it's it's uh he didn't look good right they were riding yeah. and riding but clearly setting him up and and that sucks for him i mean you can't to be that guy to finally get back to the team bus and step inside or see your teammates that worked all day long and you just didn't have it well you still got to give them credit i mean they would they're like we said yesterday there's going to be an all-out battle for third place and Baharan just put it put all their cards on the table and they're so far up to date they're the only team that have been able to ride most of the jumbo guys off the wheel 
So they, they had an incredible race today. They were really well um, represented throughout the whole stage. Obviously, a disappointment that Landa didn't wasn't able to pull it off, move up in the GC. But they rode a they rode a great race, and you got to give them credit for trying. So, go ahead. Jay. What's the I mean? What's the communication like on it? Because when I saw them all lined up and working, I figured Landa must be telling them I feel good. He, but he didn't Let's look go good. For you it. could see on his face, and George and I had a, a side talk about it. You know, he didn't look good. And I said, unless he's totally playing possum, he don't look good. But if he's not feeling good, he should have told him to slow down or stop. Change the plan. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because he he's you're going to have to sit across from from those guys at the dinner table mm -hmm. tonight. Well, if you hear some of the comments from some of the top guys, I don't think anybody was feeling that great. Maybe Lopez was. I haven't heard what he said, but the pace was super high all throughout the Madeleine, which is, Lance and I know is a very very difficult climb. They kept it going on the downhill. Started at the bottom of the climb super hard. So I, you know. I'm just not sure where, where Landa's head was at, but I don't, it, he was suffering. But at this point in the race, everybody's suffering. <clears throat> you got some scoop, George, and, and you've talked about this or teased it out over the days. Um, you know, when, when the climbs are this deep, obviously they all adjust their gearing. Yeah. But we're seeing, uh, even when it's, it's you know, 8 9%, we're seeing some cadences and some and just some, as they say en France, uh, souplesse. Yeah, so we were... That, did you hear that? Yeah, souplesse. Souplesse, I like Just that. some smoothness. Uh, of these guys and so george is always what what gearing are they riding and for you guys and guys and gals at home that pay attention to that kind of stuff it's pretty interesting yeah so one of actually one of our guests asked what, what gearing and i know that back in the day we never used compacts no matter how steep it was maybe a 28 in the back with a 38 in the front uh so some one of the top guys that actually finished top 10 today was in a 36 30 had a, had that option had that option who knows if he actually used it but he had that option to to, to use and it makes sense in such a hard stage if you're able to save the legs on some of these steep parts, and then of course have that cadence throughout the top towards the finish, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Now you see it in them. I mean, they're just they're just rolling along, staying in the saddle. Uh, not to jump backwards, but it does take us back to the Bernal thing. Carapaz all made a good run at it today. Great climber. And where would he have been? Had he not been working for Bernal for two weeks? Well, wow. he, he crashed a bunch in the beginning of the yeah. race, and he, he's clearly not as strong as he was in the Giro last year. But look, here's a guy who's definitely not at his top level, dominated the Giro d'Italia last year, and he's still trying. He's going every day. you got to give him credit. Mm -hmm. He's still trying to go for the win, represent the team. He doesn't have it, but, man, the guy has not given up. Uh, he was in that group. Um, and then they were coming back on him, and he just doubled down. That's what the, I, I thought that was the biggest baller move he did is they got him down to 20 seconds, and he just hit the gas again, got it back up to 44 seconds at one point. I'm going to have to correct you on that because apparently I had seven, <clears throat> between 8K to go to 6K to go. The pace, uh, uh, Bahran slowed down tremendously. Even one of the top guys said that it was actually kind of easy in that one section because everybody was so scared of that steep part. Mm. So that's where we saw Carapaz go from 20 seconds to 40 seconds. Well, I thought it was because you had Caruso on the front with on Landa's team, and I just thought that was that. Is that why it was so? He was intentionally no. Well, that, I think Caruso was full gas, right? But the top guys are at that point. They're, they they the, they felt like the the level had gone down a bunch, and they didn't take over because they were thinking about those final four kilometers. And when it's that steep, I mean, you could literally give a guy two minutes. Yeah. When it's that steep and that high, and at the end of the stage, two minutes is no problem. Like you can close a minute in a kilometer very easily. When it's that hard. Well, we got another good look at uh, Sepp Kuss, who's quickly yeah. becoming a very popular uh, rider, especially in the States. Not only that, but his, the, the, the way the guy rode today, when he accelerated away, obviously Primos led a little gap. He gets on um, Lopez's wheel, and he actually had the, the mental aptitude to realize that he, I, he even said, it, I can't ride at this level much longer. So instead of blowing myself right here, trying to stay on Lopez's wheel, I'm going to sit up and help my guy Roglic in the back. And he did. He sat up and did a really good effort for Roglic. Actually made the gap between him and Pogacar. This is so impressive for such a young rider. Yeah, totally poised and composed. And yeah. he's just a class kid. Uh, by the way, speaking of kids, this uh, Lopez is only 26 year old, 26 years old as well. So this 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 theme of you know early to mid 20s dominating the Tour de France just over and over. Yeah. I mean, is he not going anywhere? I mean, it kind of seemed, uh, tell me what you guys think, that, that Sepp Kuss was marking Lopez to make sure he got the, the time bonus at the top. And once he realized that was going to happen, then he could go back. He wanted to keep Pogachar from getting it. Well, and he, but he couldn't, yeah, he couldn't sustain that, that tempo. 
And but he you saw him look back too, so he's looking for his team captain, which is what he should be doing. He's obviously probably hearing some, they're watch the team directors watching the TV in the car. He's probably hearing getting some intel over the radio, but he knew that he couldn't keep going. And and his thought was, I'll go back check on Primus Roglic. Um, but even then, that tempo is so hard it, and so steep. It was a it was a tactical genius genius movement there at that point when uh, Roglic sat up. We all know in a, in, a, in a gradient that steep, the draft is really minimal. So Roglic knows that he just has Sepp, but he has these two guys potentially really wanting that stage win. So if he lets Sepp Kuz get a gap, it's up to them to chase him down. I thought it was genius. Mm. Yeah. It was exciting. And now we have a, now we have uh, uh, and, and now Lopez up into third. So I guess we should also mention Quintana again, another bad day. Lost last time check I saw it was like 16 minutes or so probably more. Um, and, and now you have Lopez jumping back up onto the, or onto the podium, not only jumping up to third, but just really, we're watching him get better and better. And he's only a minute and a half behind, uh, Roglic, uh, less than a minute behind Pogacar. The race is not over y'all. I know what you're saying. You know what I, you know what I'm I hear you saying? Be a battle you know what end. I hear? I heard, you know what I just heard you say? What? Mr. Momentum just changed his address. That's right. The Mo. <laughs> The, the mo, mo is changing. The Mo went over to Team Astana's dinner table tonight. We all know Vinokurov real well. He's 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 a punk. He's, there's, there's blood in the water he's right now. Punk. He's just thinking we're going <laughs> to make this race as hard as can bitch. be. <laughs> wow, you're like going off on all kinds of directors lately. <laughs> I did have a lot of supportive comments about my com about, about what I said yesterday. I won't get into that anymore. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Not worth it. Uh, let's talk about tomorrow, but before we do that, let's talk about power dot. Oh man. Oh man. Thank you. Team power dot for fixing my neck. I actually went out and played golf yesterday with, with, with our buddy Camilo Villegas. Uh, I would just like to brag on myself for a second. Cause I haven't been able to play in a week or so. And, and y'all know, I love golf. Like I love it. I love playing it. I love watching it. I love gambling on the golf course. I love all that shit. And I went out and I started slow. You know, we did a hard ride, the three of us, came yeah. back, took me a minute to get my swing grooved again. And, you know, I came home, and as I told Camilo, I said, when you go see the Rolling Stones, do they play first or do they play last? They play last okay. because the stars close the show. I birdie 18, one of the best in the world, pars it. Well, this is the best question uh, your son actually asked me when I walked in for dinner last night. I was like, why, why was my dad putting so far closer no, to the, I mean, driving so so closer to the hole than Camilo was? Oh. <laughs> he had no idea that right. Camilo was right. a pro because golfer. Because he, he wears funny. pants when he plays golf. <laughs> Anyways, Power Dot, I loved this company for years, loved them so much. We invested many, many years ago. They just continue to kick ass. A uh, bunch of athletes in the tour using it, a bunch of athletes in NFL, MLB, PGA. If you don't love it, 30-day money-back guarantee. I'm telling you, it, what, what's to go wrong? Think about the unit that you used as a is not even that long ago it was massive. Throw this thing in your backpack. This might even fit in my fanny pack. Now that I'm sitting here looking at it, <laughs> it could fit in my fanny pack. For real. All right. We're, awesome. we're by the way, we're offending some. <laughs> we had some parts of that the, one. Some parts of the world we're offending with the word fanny pack. They, okay, we'll they get prefer to, bum bag. Oh, bum, bum bag. bag. <laughs> this could fit in my bum bag. So head on over to powerdot.com slash the move. 20% off by code, discount code the move. Uh, also, they're giving away free meals to Feeding San Diego and Feeding America. Last one here, uh, and this is just uh, what a day for Roca, right? Obviously, they've had a great tour. They've had a bunch of guys up there, a bunch of stage wins. Miguel Angel Lopez uh, wearing the new Matador today. I love this. Uh, I love that shade. That's my go to. Um, had guy, one of the guys came over this morning and had got himself some Roca readers because of the show. Uh, the, the young chap is only on 1.0s. I'm up to 2.0s. And if you're not watching, just watch. You have to go on. You, how good do I look in these titanium aviators right now? I'm Silver serious. Silver Fox, baby. And the beard's kind of coming back. It's silver. The glasses are silver. The hair is silver. I got a little silver on the sweatshirt. How good is this? Tiff, how good do I look? Where did Tiff go? <laughs> Oh, man. Badass athletes that started this company. Four badass athletes. Head on over to Roka.com. R-O-K-A dot com. 20% off your first purchase. Enter the move at checkout. And uh, when you get uh, gray hair like me, you can look like this. All that. Want to talk about tomorrow? Yeah, it's not over.
<laughs> Even after no, no. what you saw today. So t- tomorrow, yeah, no, this ain't, this is not over. And again, I'm, I'm going to keep saying what I'm saying. This is shaping up to be, I, I think Roglic made a big statement today, but uh, anything can happen tomorrow. And anything can happen in a time trial that's technical. Look at tomorrow, 14,000 vertical feet in total climbing. Four categorized climbs, but what's interesting to me is that last little climb is not categorized. It's five or six kilometers at 6%. So that's not not for nothing. That's you know, this is a well, very hard day. And the second last climb is six kilometers at eleven point two percent. Yeah, that's insanely hard. And Another, we've done a bunch of these climbs, except for that one. Except for that one. And this is just going to be an extremely difficult day. Yeah, Cormier de Rosalan is is look is long. It's almost twenty kilometers. Col de Cezy is is very hard, deceivingly hard. Aravis is hard, and then you know obviously you have the 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 last categorized one. Uh, which must be hard because it's a horse category, HC, and it's only 6K. But yeah. again, the average is 11.2% to my point. You know, is it too far from the finish? Does that neutralize the race? Does, um, but if you're an opportunist and you're feeling good, and, and oh, by the way, Mr. Momentum has changed his address to Yo Dinner Table, uh, <laughs> then Superman Lopez, you know, I would be licking my chops if I was that jockey. Yep. And he's got to make he's got to make big moves. He's got you know he hasn't historically been the best time trialist, so he's clearly climbing better than most of the guys now. So he's got to take advantage of his strengths tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I don't think Team Bahrain will be pulling from the beginning. By yep. the way, Sam Bennett did win the first sprint today. So we're going to mention that theme of always you know this race heating up. Um, and your boy lost the polka dot today. You know, the best climber did. The best climber did. The, interesting. So who has it now? Pogachar has it now. And it, that he's got the white jersey. I, I thought I heard that if you that takes precedence, so he would wear the white jersey. So then who's going to wear the polka dot jersey? Because this like, this thing of the polka dot jersey. I'll tell you right now. Getting Some, dropped. Someone's sewing it together. It's going to be get, Getting polka. dropped on the climbs. I just don't think that's a good look. <laughs> it's not good. The sport has enough image problems. Well, now we have one of the best climbers in the race in the polka dot jersey, as well as the young rider jersey. Okay, so here we go. Here, here is this is where the proverbial rubber meets the road. So Pogachar is is in the lead with sixty six point. Roglic is in second. Lopez is in third. So that means Lopez is going to wear it tomorrow. Roglic will oh, wear yeah. yellow. Yep. Pogachar will wear will wear white, and Lopez will be in the polka dot jersey. And as we saw today, guess what? I know this is fucking crazy. He is the best We're climber. Finally getting- he is the best climber in the Tour de France. So you know what? <laughs> the whole Tour de France, you've been complaining, complaining about this jersey. Now you're okay with it? Well, he's the best climber in the Tour de France. Yes. Therefore, he should wear the polka dot jersey. Agreed. Agreed. But now you like the polka dot jersey. I'm fine with it now. I did. Listen, I'm not, I am not an inflexible, unreasonable person. I can. Uh, you're not? No. Oh, okay. I can adjust. I can adapt. And I am fine with this. And in fact, I'm happy about it. Wow. Wow. I got a lot of sleep last night. I've been slammed the last week, and it's it just kicked my ass. Man, I slept like a bear last night, and so I'm I'm ready. And by the way, too, on the ride after even as tired as I was, I thought maybe it's just better that I go as hard as I can or somewhat hard on this ride just to kind of work it out. George was complaining. Yeah, he actually went. This was the hardest you've ridden the whole time we've been here. So I think the the mo might be changing again for the last oh. week of the tour. It, it, the, the Mr. Momentum, maybe he's just flying. He's coming from Greenville to Aspen. He's on his way. <laughs> just in time. Are you guys going to make predictions? I mean, is this going to be GC guys duking it out at the end like today? Or people like Carapaz trying to get a stage win so any Ineos can go home with something? What are we going to say? God. I don't know. We just real quick on that because we talked last night about any when we right when we heard Bernal was going home, our immediate reaction was, "And you know, what is Froome and, and Garen Thomas thinking?" It no. was, I mean, obviously not going to say anything. They're classy guys, but they they have to be at home going. I told hey, you so. Sorry, mother. <laughs> I told you. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, to, I don't know. It's so hard to predict tomorrow. It's it's uh, it is hard. There's going to be a big break. It's going to you know. I mean, I wouldn't count out Lopez. He has to. This is his last shot yeah, the, to get that cushion before they, the TT. They have to make it hard. They have to uh, try to get a cushion on that TT. And just to 
as a by part of making it hard, the, there's a good chance even if there is a breakaway, it's not going to get that much time. So there, I, I think somebody from the GC guys will win tomorrow's stage most likely. And if for a real shakeup, Roglic or Pogacar are going to have to crack, and that's not likely. I don't think so. No. No, I don't think so. So it's really just the, the, the race for the third on the podium is going to be fun, though. Yeah, that'll be fun. I heard, I heard so from in 2019, a, sorry to interrupt, there was a 34-kilometer no, um, time trial. Roglic won the stage, and Lopez lost three three minutes and 45 seconds. So he better, he's, yeah. yeah. The, uh, maybe he's gotten better since then. Um, what was that TT like, though? I'm not sure. I mean, this is, the, this is 36 kilometers rolling, and then with the final climb, that's, that's hard. Very technical time <clears> trial coming up. So suits him, but still, three and a half minutes, is that's an eternity yeah. in a time trial. Uh, so, so yeah. to our point, they, they have, to <laughs> have to start making differences, but not start. They have to continue to make differences tomorrow on tomorrow's stage. Tomorrow's a nightmare day, by the way, for the sprinters. I mean, they're in full mm. survival mode. God, there's a category one climb 40 kilometers into the race, basically all uphill from the start. It's going to be a really tough day for some of these guys. God. They'll be looking for some sticky bottles. Yep. We've got a couple slides. I heard. I heard, I heard through the grapevine we have some good slides today. A lot of uh, a lot of people giving uh, Natoli, our uh, Joe. artist, a, a run for his money. Joe, you're about to lose your polka dot jersey. This actually is uh, no, this is not a Natoli esque slide, but this are the two two of the greats, man. This is Jan and uh, Pantani coming over Col de Madeleine, and what, this must have been 1996, George. Oh, 98, I would think. No, or 98, yeah. Look at that. Look how good Jan looks. Fuck. Look at that guy right there on the bike. Huh? Man. Which, by the way, our buddy Bobby Julek got third that year. Yep. What? Oh, no. Wait. Oh, boy. Can we not? Can, this has to die. This The whole time check bullshit. This is a good one. So if you're if you're just listening, maybe we'll post it on the socials. But it's, it's me clearly doing. I've just fully converted to being French. <laughs> I've got the the beret on. I've got the 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 handlebar mustache. I've got a couple baguettes, <laughs> and then there's the little the little voice captions. Uh, donc uh, le premier uh, time check, <laughs> and, and then the guy at the bar, the journalist. Oh uh, no, pas encore English, please. <laughs> this is. Donc après le premier time check. Oh, this is. I, I, I swear, I'm starting to. I'm blu- am I blushing? <laughs> am lives, I blushing? It lives forever. Oh my! Hello. Now we're talking. So, and I didn't realize this, JB, until you told me that there's a whole. You know, every week there's like some other movement, right? And some of them make a lot of sense. Some of them I don't even know what's going on. But you said there's this whole movement, like hashtag change my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I've there, missed it. There's been. A lot of social posts like this. It's like a college campus with a sign and change my mind. And this one is you sitting at the desk instead of a a college student. And and trying to get people to sign my petition. Yeah. Yeah. And it says all mountain stages should be mountaintop finishes. I, I, I would be totally fine with that. Absolutely. Hard to be at a day like today. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, you see a day like this, you're like, okay, I could get into this. And I got to give him some credit. The uh, the the uh, French time check slide was uh, Benedict it. Meyer, and the change my mind, David Badema. Thank I you. I thought you were going to say this is gold France. right here. We got yeah, one more. Oh, the make party. So this is from Swingers, yeah. <laughs> Lance and George make party. make party. You guys look pretty smooth there, actually. I uh, know. Wow. Uh, huh. Tyler Hansen or Manson. I can't read this right. I sent that one in. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler. All right. All right. A couple yeah. comments and Let's some questions. Yeah. All Let's right. Mark and writes. George is going to go ride. He's got some training to do. And oh. George is popping in on La Movida with uh, Johan and Victor today. Not today. That's been uh, changed. To tomorrow? Possibly tomorrow? The next day? Okay. Yeah. He's All got right. a big bike ride. He's got to go. No, it ah. wasn't my fault. It was uh, Victor had something going on. So. Oh, okay. Uh, Mark writes, Richie Port was a great triathlete, smashed everyone in Tasmania. I'd love to see him take on an Ironman. Yeah, I totally agree. Lance has been trying to get that campaign going for some time. How, Although, how, how about you? Uh, yeah, you're right. And um, and he may be listening going, that's the dumbest idea ever. But is I just, I've never been to Tasmania, but I just love the idea of this place because it's in Australia and I've seen pictures. I watched this one movie. But uh, fuck, what's the name of it? I forget the movie started in Tasmania, but like they their their brand is just so weird because everybody thinks of the cartoon, the Tasmanian Devil. Mm-hmm. 
So it it doesn't like when then when you see it, you're like, wait, where's the Tasmanian devil? <laughs> like it's so anyways. Cameron Worth's from there as well. <laughs> so they spit out some good athletes. Uh Teresa writes, I didn't know you went to Afghanistan on a USO trip. Kathleen Madigan, who's a big comic, yep. said you went uh to run in a, in a sandstorm with the MO. Is that Missouri? MO? What is MO? I don't know. With the MO National Guard? Yeah, Booyah. Maybe. Yeah. No, I did a couple of USO trips. And in fact, one of them uh, was in, yeah, the, every time we would go, I would go with Robin Williams. He would sort of curated the trip and he would bring, you know, the first year we went with uh, Lewis Black and Kid Rock and myself. And then um, we did two, two of these and we'd go to all these crazy countries. And so uh, I actually went to Bahrain one year. We have a big, hmm. uh, big base there, but we went to Afghanistan, Iraq, Kyrgyzstan, a uh, couple of countries in, in Europe, um, Bahrain, uh, Qatar, Qatar, as they say, Kuwait. So I'm with all these people. Like, well, obviously, Robin Williams is going to stand up for 30 minutes and make them laugh and their ass off. It, and, right. and Kid Rock's going to play the guitar. And, and after that, he you know, he'll get real fucked up. But uh, maybe. Um, so I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, I'm just right. a bike rider. So I sort of emceed the thing. And then if anybody wanted to go out and break a sweat, I'd take, I'd take them out. And run. So we would run around these bases, just, you know, five, six mile runs, just group runs. It was cool. Wow. Nice. We appreciate their service. It's, I tell you, uh, it ain't fun over there. Man, I like think it, you were at that one where there's a clip you can find on YouTube where Robin's up there and then the whole crowd turns around and salutes I don't, and I don't he know. freaked out. Yeah. Have you seen that? No. I think mm. you were there for that. Yeah. But yeah, you know, sorry. I think I kind of interrupted where you're going with no, that. No, I just, yeah, it was, it, it, they were, they were, Bob Hope used to always do the the annual Christmas trip, and then when Bob Hope passed away, then they asked Robin to kind of pick up that the legacy of that, mm. and so Robin asked me to go, and you know, wow. it was uh, you don't say no, 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 you don't say no to that. He man, I, I miss that guy. And he showed up every year for your efforts, too, yeah, right. No, he was the man. Um, I don't have a name on this. It's a you know like a screen name, but it. Oh wait, here it is, Alex. <laughs> Sorry, Alex from Virginia Beach, Virginia. My question is. Uh, when the writers abandon the tour, how do they get paid per stage, weekly, monthly? Does no, it affect well, anything if you leave? No, no. And no. they're on an annual contract. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, may, uh, let's or see. I should say a multi-year contract most of the times. Maybe this is Meg. Uh, what is the etiquette when you see someone in a We Do Kit riding? This weekend, I saw a lady riding in a full We Do Kit near Boulder. And I gave a hearty "we do" as we passed. Uh, I got nothing in return. <laughs> Did I do it all wrong? I felt like "see you in the douches" might have been too rude. So, what is the etiquette? I, don't know. <laughs> I think that's a Colorado thing. I, I wave to everybody every day I ride, and in Colorado, I don't get that many waves. It's back. Amazing. Oh. I'm like half. The, here's the thing: is most I don't know what percentage, but there's a fair amount of these folks that are, and you're going to find this hard to believe because you can ride a bike like nobody's business. Most people are afraid to take their hands off the bars, yeah. right? So to wave high would, would entail mm -hmm. taking one of your hands off the bars. And there's a lot of people that are out pedaling that are nervous, man. They Just don't do a little nod. Yeah. Well, kind of yeah. works. And so, but you're right. There's probably a higher percentage of crankiness. And I don't know why. I mean, we're here in the Rocky Mountains, best time of the year. Like, the fuck's the problem? Like, it's a pretty good deal, <laughs> right? You could yeah. be in Afghanistan. Yeah, we're also in a weird time too. We are. Some people are wearing masks on on the trails. Yeah. Oh so. no, most people, most people. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely different. One last uh, question from Strange Brew sixteen. I'm a cyclist, and my heartbeat at sleep is sometimes twenty five beats per minute. Whoa. What is your we resting have, heart rate? Geez, that's, that's pretty low. low. We need your we need your aura ring data. That wow, is, I've never heard of twenty five. I've, I've heard of upper thirties. Twenty five is my lowest probably forty. Yeah, when I was a pro biker. Yeah, I get down low forties at night. Not, not. I mean, not. But that's that's crazy low. 25. That is. I've never yep. heard that. Hmm. All right, we're running out of times uh, time for you to send in any questions or comments. So send them to the move at we do team. Head on over to the we do shop. We're getting a bunch of interest in the swag. Our girl Hannah Boone did a nice job. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's Robin and I. Oh, man. So this That's is cool. on a, a, a C-130. So we would take, actually, Air Force Two from uh, Andrews Air Force Base over to wherever we probably, you know, one of the safer places. And then we'd hop on 
either a C-17 or a C-130. And then the next years we were on Ospreys, which was a whole nother conversation. Uh, I wasn't too happy about that. But yeah, this is, so we uh, land there and then immediately jump on this and then head out to the the bases. And then they do these, you know, because it's these corkscrew landings. So they don't just come in and land like normally. You got to get right over the base and then just kind of corkscrew it down so mm -hmm. that, you know, you're, you stay high so you can't get shot out of the sky. I love that part. Like, <laughs> let's just stay as high as possible. Right? And then you just corkscrew this motherfucker right into the ground. And, um, but yeah, he was, God, those troops loved him and he loved them. And he was, you know, for as liberal as Robin was and as progressive as he was, he loved our troops. And it was, I mean, that was, those were his favorite peeps. Wow. Very cool. All right. Well, we got another big one tomorrow. Tune in, tune in to get up early and watch it. And uh, actually this one, we will have to get up early because I mean, there's, it's going to hit the fan early. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. So we'll stage. get up early and then uh, you know, hop on over here and listen to the move. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. See y'all tomorrow. In the douches.